Hey, have you ever heard the expression, woulda, coulda, shoulda? Or <laughs> woulda, coulda, shoulda? However that goes. That's an old expression, which means you, you should do whatever you can instead of just sitting back and letting things go. I see a lot of beekeepers of videos on YouTube going through their bee yard checking for dead outs. And then they say they haven't checked their bees for a couple of weeks. And the other thing is they don't bring their bees back home to a central location. They leave them out where they were during the summer. I bring all my colonies back home to, to my house. So basically I don't have to drive anywhere to check them. I come out in the morning with my coffee and I go through and I check the colonies that I know are, are having issues and I need to check them, make sure they're not chilled. And today's December 9th. Today was, it warmed up at the end of the day. Tomorrow's going to be warm, supposedly. But I wanted these bees to come out and do a cleansing flight before it got dark. So I took, I took all these uh, fuses I have in the shim hole here to get them to see the light, to get them to try to come out. Because I work hard all winter long to prevent losses. And that's... The most productive way to be a beekeeper, just sitting back and letting the colonies sit outside in the winter, hoping you have some left next spring, is kind of foolish to me. Are you really that lazy? Are American beekeepers that lazy? It's just kind of really pathetic to me to see those kind of videos on YouTube. I don't know why you're posting videos like that on YouTube or you're not helping other beekeepers. This is a colony that I checked today and I found out they were too small. So it I did this about a half hour ago. It was warm enough to open up the hive. I took another deep away from them. So I downsized them. And then I can put a strap around them. And then when it gets really cold, I'm going to bring them inside here. Not all my colonies are having trouble. This is a good sized colony here. This row on the bottom is my new 2020 queens. And I gave them some bees this summer. And some of them really didn't get enough bees and they didn't have enough winter bees, so I have to help them get through winter. And this row up here on top is my 2019 colonies. And I used them this summer to make honey, extra honey and extra bees that I took away from them. So I have to make sure I watch their status during the winter, make sure they don't get too small. Because they gave a lot this summer for me from other colonies. And then the colonies that were too small... Because I breed queens all summer long, May, June, July, August, and through September. The smallest ones went into the window end of August. And some of them aren't so small anymore. They actually grew too much. So i got to keep an eye on them to make sure they have enough food. And then other colonies that have issues that are outside. And I have room if I lose a colony or I lose a queen or they abscound. It's basically a loss of a colony too. I will put them in a space in the window. I always put them on top. And then the colonies that are mid-size, they sit out here on the deck. And when it's too cold for them to be outside, I plug up the holes with rags. Tiny little rags. <laughs> I see a book, or I read a book, about people sticking beeswax or drywall in holes. Nobody's come up with the idea of taking rags and cutting them up into pieces and putting them in the hole. That's what I use. There's some more in the window. And then I've got some over here. And what I do, if I don't see the colony on top, see the colonies there, and I can't judge the size of the cluster by, by looking at them on top, I will take a hive tool. I will stick it in here. And I can do this sometimes after I take the super off, or sometimes I can do it while the super's on, and I will pry it up. And I take a peek in there to, just to see if the cluster goes down into both deeps. That's how I judge the size of the colony. If it's, if it's not both deeps and not using the bottom deep, I take it away from them. That way I know the colony is only so big. Just assuming if you have two deeps and a medium and you assume, oh, your colony's fine, it's going to make it through winter, and you don't realize because you don't see what's inside, you don't see what's inside this, this hive, your, your colony's too small to survive a very cold night, and they will, they will get chilled. That's one of the reasons why I check in the mornings. Colonies, I think, are too small. I check them in the morning. And if I see them chilled and they're not moving, I will strap them. If they haven't been strapped already, most of these are strapped. I will strap them. I'll plug up the holes with rags. And I will bring them in the bee room and let them warm up. You can save them if you catch them within the first few hours of them being chilled. The first day, anyway. Okay? Thank you.